Hey guys, it's Cameron again, and I thought I would take a break from the fancy vintage horror paperback collection videos and do just a simple book haul. A book haul of vintage horror paperbacks. Not all of these are old horror paperbacks. Some of these are newer hardcover books. But I'm going to start with all of the horror paperbacks because I have been buying so many of these things lately. There's a bookstore that's pretty close to my house that just recently got a ton of horror paperbacks from this man's collection. He had passed away, which was really unfortunate. Um, but the family just donated all these books to the bookstore. This man bought all of these horror paperbacks in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and he never read them. So they are all in perfect condition. And when I went there and saw all these books, I was completely overwhelmed, and the bookstore made a deal with me. They said I could pull off all of the books that I wanted and put them into boxes, and they would put them in the back storage room, and then I could just come back over the next few months and buy them little bits at a time. That was really awesome of them. So I have been doing that for a while now. Um, I have bought probably two boxes worth, but I did go back recently and I bought about 30 books or so. So I'm going to show all of those in this video. The first one here is Venom by Russell O'Neill. This one is Malsoom by Gerald John O'Hara. Blood Heritage by Sherry S. Tepper. Like I said, these books are all mint condition. Here are a few by Charles L. Grant. This one is called The Grave, The Tea Party, Doom City, and Dialing the Wind, which gives me all kinds of nostalgic autumn feels. This one is Horror House by J.N. Williamson. White Spider by Joyce Wolf. I love the simple cover on this. It's completely white, but you can kind of see the outline of the spider. I'm not sure if my camera is picking that up. The Owl's Fane Horror by Duffy Stein. And this has one of those V.C. Andrew style uh, die cut covers. The Light at the End by John Skip and Craig Spector. The Voice of the Visitor by Larry Slonaker. The Twelfth Child by Raymond Van Over, which I think is an hysterical cover. And here is Monsters You've Never Heard Of, which is also by uh, Raymond Van Over of the Creepy Baby book that I just showed. Thirst by Yotter Kretinsky. Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell. Really need to read this soon. The House by Bentley Little. I used to have a creased up copy of this book not too long ago. Uh, so I was able to replace it with a nice, pretty copy. Resurrection Dreams by Richard Lehman. Evil Eye by Erin M. Ely. The Dead Man's Kiss by Robert Weinberg. Death Walker by Patrick Whalen. Ceremonies by Josh Webster. Demon Within by Donna Reed. And lastly, for this set of books, I have The House of Cain by Ken Yulo. And then I also went on eBay and bought even more horror paperbacks because I am obsessed. This one is called Deadly Secret by Martha Johnson and Shadow Walkers by Nina Romberg. And then from another seller on eBay, I got three zebra titles. This one is called The Alchemist by Les Witten, which is a beautiful copy. It's in mint condition, and they even included this uh, protective cover, which I really appreciate. From the same seller, I got Dream House by Christopher Fay, which is also in beautiful shape. And lastly is Home Sweet Home by Ruby Jean Jensen. I've been trying to find more of her books because they're very rare, uh, but this one is also beautiful. Perfect copy. And then I got a nice little stack of books from a friend and seller on Facebook. This one is called 14 Vicious Valentines, which is an anthology of uh, 14 different Valentine's Day horror stories. This one is Ghost Train by Stephen Laws, which I found out after I bought this that there is a hardcover copy um, available. And I didn't know that, otherwise I probably would have bought the hardcover first because I definitely prefer hardcover over paperback. Um, unfortunately, most of these paperbacks aren't available in hardcover. You can only get them in paperback. But this one is an exception, so I'll probably end up selling this and getting the hardcover at some point. Here is Tangerine by Linda Crockett Gray. I love that cover so much. It's Loose by Warner Lee. And Carlisle Street by T.M. Wright. All right, so those were all of the vintage horror paperbacks. Now I'm getting into all of the newer horror titles that I've purchased over the past month. This one is called Kill River by Cameron Rubick. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry, Cameron, if I'm butchering your last name. Uh, this is an 80s uh, slasher throwback, and when I saw this, I just had to get it. The cover really reminds me of a, a zebra horror novel from the 80s. But uh, yeah, it's a slasher that takes place in an abandoned water park. 
So can't beat that. And because I bought that off Amazon directly from the author, he went ahead and threw in a copy of Kill River 2, which is the sequel to Kill River, obviously. And then also on eBay, I picked up a copy of uh, Feeder Macabre by Kellen Patrick Burke. And this was originally published in paperback, but the uh, publisher gave it a limited run in hardcover. So there are only a hundred copies of this hardcover in print. Um, so it is signed by the author there. So I'm very happy to have this. I got it for pretty cheap, about $16. So for such a limited book, this is a, a very, very good price. And then from Amazon Marketplace, I got a copy of 10 by Gretchen McNeil. This is a young adult retelling of 10 Little Indians by Agatha Christie, which is one of my favorite books of all time. So I've been wanting to read this for years now. And um, I hear that this is more of a slasher than a mystery. So I'm excited to read it. And then from good old Steve Donahue here on BookTube, I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, he sent me um, a couple boxes of books um, that he had gotten from publishers, but he uh, either wasn't interested in reviewing them or knew that I would like them, so he sent them my way. Uh, this first one here is Strange Weather by Joe Hill, which is a collection of four of his short uh, novels. And then this one isn't as much uh, horror, it's um, actually nonfiction, and it is The Apparitionists, A Tale of Phantoms, Fraud, Photography, and the Man Who Captured Lincoln's Ghost by Peter Mansu. And this is basically a uh, nonfiction uh, book on phantom photography. So I thought that was interesting. And then I got a couple of hardcover uh, YA horror books from Steve also. And this one is called Haunting the Deep by Andrea Mather. Uh, this is by the author who wrote uh, How to Hang a Witch. This one is called House of Ash by Hope Cook. And I had never heard of this before. It looks really awesome. I love the book underneath the dust jacket there. That's really cool. And this one is the new book from Cat Winters. This is called Odd and True. Um, I don't know if this would be considered horror as much as it is like a dark fantasy, but uh, I don't know. It looked kind of like a horror, so I decided to include it into this haul. This was a pre-order. Um, it is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Stephanie Perkins uh, announced that she was writing a Scream-esque slasher uh, years ago, like three or four years ago she announced it and I have been excited for it ever since. Uh, so I am currently reading it. I am almost done. Uh, and I've been reading it for a while because I am just not into it. It is not at all how I was expecting it to be. It is very, very romance heavy. There's no tension, no suspense. Um, there's just like a bunch of romance, which I don't really care for. I mean, romance in books is fine as long as it makes me feel something but this just isn't doing it for me. And uh, so it's just a bunch of just kind of melodramatic romance and then someone's murdered and then melodramatic romance and then someone's killed again brutally, but there's no tension, there's no buildup. I like a good gory murder every once in a while, but it, it, it's just not working for me. Uh, so I can't say I recommend this one, sorry. I got this off of Amazon. This is called Video Night by Adam Caesar. I have been watching Adam Caesar's YouTube videos and uh, following him on social media. He seems like a really cool guy. So I decided I would order one of his books and give it a go. He has quite a few books out right now. Uh, but this one was the one that really stuck out to me because it is an 80s throwback and it just looked like a lot of fun. So I cannot wait to read this. And then this is a brand new book from J.W. Auker who wrote A Season with the Witch, which is basically a, a nonfiction book on um, Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, but this one is his first fiction offering and uh, it's a middle grade kind of spooky book. And it's called Death and Douglas. And I just thought it looked really cute. So I'm excited to give this a go. This book is so cool. It is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book. It is called The Official Grimoire, A Magical History of Sunnydale, which this is basically designed um, to be Willow's book, you know, the character Willow from Buffy, who's my favorite character. And this little thing comes off, so I'll pull that off so you can uh, see the cover a little better there. It's very, very cool. Um, and the entire book is set up like a spell book. It is a whole lot more detailed than I thought it would be. They put a lot of work into this book and I'm looking through it and I see that uh, it starts out about 1998, which is when the first season started and it goes all the way through to 2003 when the show ended. Um, so it's in sync with the series um, in each season. So I thought that was nice. They clearly put a lot of work into this book and I cannot wait to just read it from cover to cover. Ah, and then I got some pre-code horror comics, which are some of my favorite things to read. 
The first one here is Tales from the Crypt, the EC Archives, Volume 1. I do own um, The Vault of Horror, Volume 1, which I read and reviewed on Goodreads. It's perfect. These editions are amazing. But I had not picked up the Tales from the Crypt one. So here is the first volume in uh, the Tales from the Crypt archives. Uh, beautifully reproduced. Each comic looks uh, amazing. And it's just the perfect edition. It's the best way to own these comics. I've read a lot of Tales from the Crypt and other EC comics, but... I had never really gotten into any other pre-code horror comics, so I decided to start picking up the pre-code classics collection. And this first one I got is Weird Mysteries, Volume 1. And I also got Volume 1 of Strange Fantasy as well, which also comes with this really nice slipcase. So I definitely want to get more of these. And that is all for the books, but I did pick up something else that's not a book, but I still thought I would show it just because it's horror related and it's really cool and I think a lot of you guys will like it. What I have here is the Trick or Treat soundtrack vinyl. This is from Waxwork Records and it is absolutely amazing. This is honestly my very, very first vinyl. I have never collected vinyl before, but I saw this and I just, I had to get it. Uh, this was released a couple years ago from Waxwork um, and it sold out so quick. And it's been very expensive to buy online, but they just recently did a second pressing. So I bought it as soon as I could, uh, and I'm so glad that I was able to get it before it sold out. Trick or Treat is one of my favorite films to watch on Halloween Day. It's been a tradition of mine for a few years now, and I'm really, really excited to have this. And not only is the packaging really cool, but the records themselves are awesome. What I have here is the first record which is pretty sweet. And here is the second vinyl. So there's Sam from the movie with his burlap mask. And that is him without his mask. I love this set. And not only that, but it also comes with a poster with newly commissioned artwork. Here is the poster right here. It's very long. But you got Sam in the doorway. It says trick or treat, all the pumpkins, I love it. I'm definitely framing this and hanging it up in my living room. So that is all for my book haul today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great one and I will see you next time. Goodbye.